Hey, if you're looking to create a set of financial projections for a biotech company, uh, then you've come to the right place. We have created a financial projection template built specifically for uh, biotech, pharmaceutical, um, medical device companies that uh, we think will be really helpful as you're trying to put together some numbers for investors or potentially lenders. Um, we're going to link to this particular template in the description of the video below. Um, also, at the end of the video, I'm going to uh, show you how to get a discount code um, to be able to get this template at a discount as well. So um, first of all, though, my name is Adam Hooksa. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped uh, thousands of entrepreneurs create financial projections for all sorts of different types of startups and businesses. Um, and today we're specifically focused on this biotech uh, financial model that we've put together. I'm going to show you how to fill it out um, and show you kind of the end result. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're going to start kind of with the end in mind. So this first at a glance tab is going to show you after you have put in all your assumptions for your projections, this is kind of what you're going to get. You're going to have a profit and loss at a glance. Um, you'll see some key industry ratios, use of startup funds, uh, graphs and charts, some different tables. Um, you're also going to get a five-year income statement summary, a five-year cash flow summary, a five-year balance sheet summary, and then the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet all broken down by month here. So if you need that monthly detail, you'll have that as well. All right, so that's kind of the end. That's a deliverable at the end of this, but we have some work in order to get there. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is come to the input assumptions tab. You can put in uh, you know, general assumptions like start date of the projections when you want these to start, uh, any investor funding that you're looking to get. Um, so you have several slots to be able to put in additional uh, investors. Fixed assets, so in this example, you, your assets may be a patent. Um, for example, that would be an in, intangible asset. So you have the ability to say what category of asset that is, the value and the life expectancy in years for that as well. You may also have, let's say you have some lab equipment, $50,000 worth of lab equipment um, that you think is gonna have a life expectancy of 20 years. Then maybe we also have a small business loan here of $50,000. We can put an in interest rate and the term on that loan as well. All right, now let's jump over to our input revenue. So we've got a number of assumptions here <clears throat> that we'll kind of walk through. So the idea here is, if I can expand this, is that whether you're developing a pharmaceutical or a medical device, kind of at the top level here, the idea is that there is going to be a, a population of uh, maybe a country or an area of people that you think you will be approved for use in. So let's just, I just took the United States here, starting population right around that 330 million uh, with annual growth rate in the U.S. right now at about 0.4%. So this is kind of the, the U.S. population. And let's say you are, um, your particular solution is focused on a, um, on a particular form of cancer, uh, treating a particular form of cancer with the incidence rate of 0.0107%. So in other words, the number of new cases um, that that happen each year, um, or each month, I should say, is 35,000, okay? <clears throat> and we also know that, hey, some percentage of these cases are resolved each month as well, maybe, uh, maybe through the patient uh, passing away, um, or through the patient healing and, and being cured and not needing treatment anymore. And so we know, hey, there's this current number of active cases in the population. And then also we know there's these new cases plus the cases that are resolved um, or minus the cases that are resolved to give us our number of active cases each month. All right. And so then what we can do here is then say, what percentage market penetration do we think we're our solution or whether it's a pharmaceutical or a device, um, something else, what, what percentage of market pen penetration, what percentage of total available cases are we going to be treating? So maybe we're waiting here for uh, FDA approval or some sort of approval for a few months, um, but we, are, we think we're soon going to be able to start um, serving patients. And so we say, hey, we're gonna have this 0.4% penetration, 0.5%, and we see this growth rate up to, you know, in the first year we get up to 3% of uh, the available cases are using our solution. And we can grow that from there. Let's say we're gonna have a 50% annual growth rate of that market penetration over, over time. That will then allow us to calculate the both the number of new patients served as well as the number of active patients that we're serving because there could be 
uh, different differences in our revenue, maybe in the first month with a new patient versus um, kind of on an ongoing. And so that's why we want to break the, that down between the two. All right, so now we have the ability to add some different types of revenue. So first we're looking at pharmaceutical revenue. So we're saying, okay, let's say we have, um, we for the average pharmaceutical revenue per new patient served. So this would be, um, you know, these new patients right here. Whoops, these 141 new patients are gonna spend uh, $500. So, yep, $500 um, per month. So we look at that. Yep, so what we can see is uh, 141 times 500. Yep, gives us that 70,000, roughly $70,500 in that revenue from, uh, from that new patient revenue. Now we'll also have uh, pharmaceutical revenue from active patients. So, uh, but we're saying, hey, maybe maybe they pay 500 in the first month, uh, but then after that, it goes down to like a $75 a month um, uh, a payment that we expect revenue. And so now we're taking the number of active patients served, this number times 75 to come up with, with our uh, revenue from active patients. And then we add those two revenue line items together to come up with our pharmaceutical revenue. Now we're gonna go through a similar process if you have a medical device. So you may not have both, right? You may have pharmaceutical revenue or a medical device, or maybe you have maybe you have both, but um, uh, probably what you're gonna do is, is be zeroing out some of these assumptions if you are only a medical device company, zero out the pharmaceutical revenue. You can actually hide, um, hide entire sections. So if you're not doing medical device, you can just um, highlight that, right click and hide those rows. Uh, I'm gonna unhide them so we can take a look at them, but um, but we're going to follow the, the same uh, process here. So for a medical device, there's kind of a couple different options that we built out. So either you're selling the medical device either directly to a patient uh, with uh, the, that we are serving. So these uh, new patients and active patients. And so we can say percentage of new patients that purchase a device and then percentage of active patients that purchase a device each month. Now, um, you know, it kind of depends on the device. Is it something, is it a device that you're, it's going to last a long time, or is it something that's kind of more replaceable that you're going to have to keep buying a new one of on a regular basis? And so that really depends um, on your particular situation, but you can enter in those assumptions. Then the other idea here is that it's possible that maybe it's not the end um, patient that's buying the devices. So maybe that's maybe this should be zero, but we are selling directly to doctor's offices, providers, medical offices, uh, hospitals, that sort of thing that are purchasing our device, and we can just put in the number of units that we expect to sell to you know, doctors and, and medical offices and that sort of thing in this column. And then we just have a simple price per device to give us our medical device revenue. And then let's say uh, maybe we have some royalty revenue uh, as well that maybe from our uh, pharmaceutical um, revenue that we assume we're gonna have some royalties and they're gonna grow at some rate. So you can add in different royalty revenue from different product lines um, over time and to give you a total royalty revenue line item. We also on the expense section here, uh, we have the ability to add commissions as a percentage of sales. And uh, I'm sorry, ad spend as a percentage of sales first up here. So ad spend as a percentage of sales and then uh, sales rep commissions for both the pharmaceutical sales reps and the medical device sales reps, and they may have different commission rates for each um, that will give us our total commission expense. Same approach here, we have cost of goods sold uh, for as a percentage of pharmaceutical revenue, cost of goods sold as a percentage of medical device revenue. The physical devices might have a higher cost of goods sold typically than maybe a pharmaceutical uh, a drug would. So ultimately that's gonna give us, we have our pharmaceutical, medical device, and royalty revenue here, along with our direct expenses, our cost of goods sold. All right, let's move on to our operating expenses here. So what we commonly do is uh, we will you know, put in operating expenses, we categorize them as, is it R&D, is it sales and marketing, is it general and admin? And then we wanna know whether those expenses should be a fixed dollar amount, fixed monthly dollar amount, a percentage of revenue, or a per FTE, per full-time equivalent employee expense. All right, so let's say, hey, right now in the first few months, we're trying to get FDA um, uh, approval. And so we have an FDA consultant uh, at $50,000 a month that we're paying, but then that drops down over time here. So you'll notice that we have like more detailed expenses here for the first, 
first 12 months. And then we put zeros in for year two, two through five. And instead, we just have this approach where we say, well, we don't know exactly what the expenses are going to be out in years two through five. It's too far out to know, really. But we know that other biotech uh, companies like us tend to spend 15% uh, of their revenue on general and admin, 20% on our R&D and 10% on sales and marketing. And you would need to you know, do your own research. Depending on what type of uh, company you are, you'd need to do your own research to figure out what is normal percentages of revenue here. But then you'd be able to just um, kind of scale those expenses um, as you grow revenue. And then lastly here, we can put in our uh, salaried positions. So we have different salary positions. We again, put them in categories. So what category should they fall under? So annual salary, benefits, what month they'll start. So you can say, hey, we're going to hire this VP of sales in month 13. We're going to start them right away. You can also say, hey, we're going to have uh, multiple of a particular employee. Now, this probably doesn't make sense because that's the CFO. So we should just have one CFO. But maybe we have, um, you know, instead of putting in each individual researcher here, we could just put in two or five if we have, you know, multiple researchers that we're all hiring at the same time. We can add those researchers there. All right, and then once you enter in all those assumptions, that's when you're going to get back to your profit and loss at a glance and your various summary charts and tables. So again, uh, thank you for making it through the end of this video. Um, we have a coupon code for you in the description of uh, the video below, and so there'll be a form there. You want to fill out that form. We're going to send you an updated uh, coupon code that you'll be able to use at checkout and get a discount on this particular template. And then if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to reach out at support at projectionhub.com. All right, thanks.